Hi, I'm Russ, owner and operator of Fit to Score, a Dallas Fort Worth golf club fitting and custom club building company. Today I'm going to discuss golf shaft stiffness. I will introduce you to the terms flexural rigidity and EI. These are the engineering terms used to describe the stiffness of a beam. They are used to describe golf shaft stiffness in this 2009 patent filed by Bridgestone Sports. Why do I bring this up? Because EI is the way shaft engineers describe shafts. The patent I'm reading from described and patented a flexural rigidity EI profile. Shaft engineers don't use terms like kick point, stiffness, or many of the terms we often hear to describe golf shafts. Marketing departments use those terms. I'm going to read from this patent, leaving out references to the illustrations. EI means the product of Young's modulus E and the geometrical moment of inertia I and indicates the flexural rigidity of each part of the shaft. The value of EI can be calculated by the three-point bending test. In the three-point bending test, first the shaft is placed in a horizontal position on a pair of supports. Then a load is placed vertically at a central point between the pair of supports. That is the point of measurement. The strain of the shaft at the point of EI measurement is measured and the value of EI is determined. Here's the formula. EI equals the length of the segment being measured, cubed, divided by 48, times the load applied to the shaft divided by the strain under the load. That is the language used by shaft engineers. This drawing from that patent illustrates the technique. This presentation is not about new technology. In my hands is a 1998 mechanical engineering master's thesis exploring golf club dynamics. The author, Paul Brontward, used EI to define the stiffness of the shaft used in his modeling. And here on page 57 is the description of the process defining shaft stiffness with EI measurement. In the days before what I call my EI revelation, I used a different technique to profile shafts. I was attempting to discuss shaft profiles with a shaft engineer, and he rolled his eyes like one would when talking to a crazy person. Then he took me into an R&D lab and educated me. As a result, I started learning about EI profiling. Two years and five versions later, 15 of these were handmade by my friend Steve Wilson and I. It took us six months to make 15 machines. Steve is finally forgiving me for dragging him into the project. 13 of these instruments are now in the hands of fellow club fitters and shaft companies. Now when I have a discussion with a shaft engineer, we both speak the same language, EI profiles. And even more important, I can conduct fittings with a complete understanding of shaft stiffness. So what are we talking about? Shaft stiffness. Shafts are rated by stiffness. We have R, S, X. Let's look at a page on the Mitsubishi Rayon website. This page and all the Mitsubishi brochures show and compare EI profiles of the Mitsubishi products. The Mitsubishi website is a great place to start reading about EI stiffness profiles. In fact, it's one of the few places to read anything about stiffness profiles unless you like reading shaft design patents and graduate school thesis papers. Before we move on, let's have a look at my instrument for measuring shaft EI profiles. We have two supports, brass bushings on a stainless rod, designed to relieve whatever frictional stress might occur during loading. The distance between them is constant and was set during manufacturing. Centered is a curved loading press. It is guided by two pair of precision linear bearings to minimize friction. It is weighted to apply a preload to the shaft. At the top is a platform on which the loading weight is placed. A digital depth gauge measures deflection of the shaft when the load is applied. The load, barbell weights, machined to a precise weight, are raised and lowered by a forklift style apparatus using an electrical linear motor. This is how a shaft is measured. A shaft is marked every inch. It's inserted 
underneath the press and position to a mark. The press is precisely weighted and applies a preload to the shaft. The gauge is zeroed. The weight is dropped on the shaft. The deflection is noted. The weight is lifted. The shaft is repositioned. And this process is repeated 36 more times. The deflection measurements are entered into a database and through the magic of Excel we get graphic illustrations of shaft bend profiles. What's unique about this design? First, it's thousands less than laboratory equipment used by shaft companies. Second, 15 identical instruments were made, creating for the first time in the golf business a uniform way to measure shaft EI or flexural stiffness. Let's examine the illustration in that patent application we were looking at. Along the horizontal axis is distance from the tip. The scale starts at the tip and moves right to the butt. On the vertical axis is flexural rigidity or EI in kilograms of force. And here's the image from the Mitsubishi website again. The image is the same. Tip on the left, butt on the right. Stiffness on the vertical axis ascending from soft at the bottom to stiffer as you go upward. Let's move from the image on the Mitsubishi website to my graphics. Here are the profiles for all the new Mitsubishi Diamana shafts, all 60 gram S-Flex, but not exactly the same as the Mitsubishi images which are enhanced to make a marketing point. But fundamentally the same. The Mitsubishi images are one validation of the system and as Jeff Lucas, senior project engineer at Aldla said when he looked at an early version of this instrument, you got it. Okay, we got it. From a club maker's perspective, what's the use of knowing shaft bend profiles? Actually, the question becomes, how can you fit without them? Let's take a quick look at what they show us. Let's take a look at some KBS iron shafts. The red line is the new C-taper. The blue line is the KBS tour. We can clearly see that the new design has a stiffer tip section. This will create the lower trajectory, lower spin flight sought by better players. We know this before we go into a fitting. The EI profiles and accumulated experience predict what we can expect. Of course, each golfer is different. What works with one golfer may not work with another. That is where testing during a fitting session reveals what is best for your swing style. Here's another comparison. The Royal Precision 5.0 rifle compared to the KBS Tour Parallel. Virtually the same shaft. Little surprise actually, they were both designed by Kim Braley. Aha! This instrument made it clear to the Fit to Score affiliates that experience with the Royal Precision rifle shafts will transfer directly to the KBS Tour Parallel. While we're talking about parallel shafts, an expansion of this software is a virtual shaft trimmer. By applying a trim strategy to the average parallel shaft in the previous slide, we can see what the set profiles will look like. That's new. Another use of this instrument is certification of a set of shafts. A low handicap player will want to know that every shaft in his set follows a consistent stiffness pattern. In this set, each shaft was measured in 3 inch increments and the results were tabulated. The graphic shows consistent profiles throughout the set. This is not always so. High quality shafts look like this image. Others do not. The profiles are intertwined or one or more of the shafts have completely different profiles. As I said earlier, this is not new technology. This is an application of shaft engineering measuring instrumentation to the club building and club fitting process. That is new and it is only available from club fitting and club building affiliates of fit to score Let's take a look at some driver shafts. Mitsubishi Rayon has recently introduced the Fubuki K, a third version of the popular Fubuki series. We can see from this comparison of tip stiffness the K sits between the Alpha and the original Tour models. The objective of the K design was more feel than the original Tour model. We can see a subtle change in butt stiffness. Player testing on Tour verified 
that the design resulted in more feel. From studying these three shafts with very subtle changes, fitters with access to this profile information develop a finer understanding of shaft fitting than was previously possible. This next graphic shows the incredible consistency of the Mitsubishi product line. What you see here are all the Kylie shafts, different weights, different stiffnesses. As a fitter, I can move from weight to weight or flex to flex, knowing I am working with a product that changes predictably. A heavier shaft is the same as a lighter shaft, it just weighs more and is a little stiffer. A different flex is just stiffer, but the flighting and behavior will be the same. Here are the profiles of another popular shaft from a different manufacturer. Uh-oh, I've seen bowls of noodles that were more consistent than this product. As a fitter, I cannot change weight or flex and expect to have a shaft with similar properties. The only thing consistent about these shafts is a pricey branding logo painted on them. You will not find any of these in my fitting system. Another use of EI data is comparing shafts. Here the MRC Alema is compared to the newly released Ultralight Bissara W. Same design, different weights and torques. Knowing the flighting behavior of the Alema, the Ultralight W, a lightweight version of the same design, will behave the same in the hands of a golfer with less strength. Well, there you have it, a quick look at the science of shaft profiling and how it's useful in the hands of a good fitter. Find a golf club fitter that truly understands the shafts they're working with and you'll be on your way to better golf with equipment that works with your swing, rewarding your consistent strikes with consistent ball striking. If you want to see averaged EI profiles of the shafts we have measured to date, go to fit2score.com and click the Technology tab. Thanks for spending your time with me. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, call me to book a fitting session.